In this video, we're going to talk about further editing of our surface by adding extra de surface definitions to our already created surface. So now that we've finished editing the tin lines and points in our drawing, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to modify our surface display style so that it looks more like what a regular surface would look like inside of Civil 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on EG, select surface properties. I'm going to drop down my surface style and I'm going to set it back to the 2 and 10 background. I'm going to hit apply and hit OK. And now we are back to uh, just a regular surface display style of, of contours and a, and a boundary. So moving on from here, we have a lot of other surface definitions that we haven't added to our drawing yet. We've added a boundary, we've added one single point group, we've done some edits, but we haven't added any break lines. Often you don't add contours and DEM files are very specific and drawing objects are not always used. But I think it's important to go ahead and add a couple of break lines because we had that survey import that we did that created some really nice break lines for us. So we're gonna go ahead and add these in. And the way that you can add them in is you could go ahead and select each individual break line and then go to break lines in your definitions of your surface and right click and select add and choose your break line type and go ahead and click OK and add it. The only problem is, is that you may not select all of the break lines that the survey import brought in, or you might select lines that aren't necessarily supposed to be break lines, like in, you know, for example, the fence line that's here. So what Civil 3D does in a survey import that's really nice is that Using our survey figure prefix database, it creates a list of what lines that were imported are, in fact, break lines. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to right click on our survey. We are going to open it for edit. And then we're going to go to our figures section inside of our survey. In that figures section, what you'll notice if you scroll to the right is that you're going to see a column that says break line and it has a yes check mark or it has a option for no checked and it says no. What this is doing is it's telling Civil 3D is this feature or figure that was brought into Civil 3D from our survey import a break line and should it be applied to a surface? And if it's checked yes, then it can be added to a surface. So what we're going to go ahead and do is then right click on figures, create break lines, and then in the create break lines window, what you'll notice is that you have objects that are in fact break lines like buildings or bottom of ditches and they're checked as yes. Uh, and then you have items that we don't necessarily know if they're break lines, uh, such as fence lines, and those are not selected. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go with trusting that our figure prefix database was set up correctly. And we're going to go ahead and say that we wanted them to be added to our EG surface and we're going to click OK. When we click OK, now we get into the Add Break Lines window, uh, and we can add a description of what it is. Since we are adding in survey figures, I want to call this description survey so that I know that these break lines are based on our sur survey import uh, when we look at the definitions of our EG surface. Then we can select the type of break line we have. So the types of break lines that you have are standard, proximity, wall, from file, and non-destructive. When you're dealing with survey figures, you know that they are standard because each vertice is related to a specific survey elevation point that was imported into the drawing. And so you want to select standard. But if you had a feature line that wasn't from survey, you could maybe know that it doesn't have a defined elevation. And so you want to use proximity. You say, I know that that vertice in that feature line is correct, but I don't know if the elevation is correct. So I don't want to base it on the vertice elevation, but I'd rather base it on my surface, but know that I want to draw a tin line to that vertice. Um, walls will create a vertical face in your surface. Uh, and then from file is bringing in specific feature lines from a, a separate file. And then non-destructive basically modifies the surface, but it doesn't imply that you are going to add any extra elevations or, or redefine existing tin lines. So we're going to go ahead and select standard. Then we have the option of doing weeding factors. Weeding factors basically remove points. If you have too many vertices too close together, you can remove them based on a certain distance. So in this example we have here, it says 15 feet. If there was a point that was less than 15 feet away from each other, and we had the weeding factors option selected, it would remove any points that were 
within 15 feet of the previous point. Um, then you can also choose angle where it will choose, it will rotate to a specific point. If it's within, for example, here, four degrees of the other point, then it would remove that point from our feature line. Then if you have a long span that doesn't have enough information in it, you can go ahead and do supplementing factors. So if you have a long line that's 300 feet long and you have a one vertice at one end and another vertice at another end, and you wanna add a couple of points in between, you can supplement at a specific distance. And for this one, it would be 100 feet if we had it selected. And then we have the mid ordinate distance that we've discussed previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And what you'll see here is we got a little bit of an error window. And what that's from is that when we created our surface, we had that definition that said whether or not it would allow crossing brake lines. We never changed it to yes to allow crossing brake lines. So we have a couple brake lines that cross each other and that's what the warning was about. So now if we jump back to the prospector tab and we go to brake lines, what you'll see now is that our survey definition shows up and all those brake lines that are part of that survey import are inside of this explanation of our definition for our surface. One thing that I do know from looking at this is that um, in this area, uh, we had a line right here uh, that was not added. It's supposed to be a top of bank. Um, and so if you ho hover over this point, you'll see it says description top of bank. This top of bank probably went across here somewhere and we just didn't get it defined because maybe we had a, a poor code in our survey. And so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna create a new uh, point group for this top of bank so that we can get it into our surface. So if I select that point and I go to properties and I look at this, the raw description is T-O-B-B-E-G. So that's the beginning of the top of bank. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna go into point groups, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create new. I'm gonna call this T-O-B and then I'm gonna to go to raw description matching and I'm gonna look at my description key sets and I'm gonna find TOB. I'm gonna include all the information for every point that has a TOB raw description and it's gonna be displayed with a basic point style and a point number elevation and description. I'm gonna hit apply and I'm gonna hit okay. Now you'll see that we have a lot of top of bank points that were not included as part of this feature line here. So this entire line along here is a top of bank and we're showing this is actually being a slope in here. Uh, so what I want to go ahead and do is now add in a new point group. So I'm going to go to point groups. I'm going to right click. I'm going to select add. I'm going to select TOB and I'm going to click OK. And what you'll see is our contours now have modified themselves based on the ground shots that we have here and the top of bank shots that we have.